you know? It's a sad place. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull myself. So me and Johnny are gonna pull out, right? You want me off too, Greg? Yeah, exactly. Like, like we did before. You're gonna pull out and then you're gonna bring yourself in. Oh, okay. And okay, okay, cool. So I'll do a little stage direction. Okay, so here we are, the Zeppler family Zoom Christmas. Um, basically, we fade in. On a Zoom meeting screen, two participant boxes are up, but neither has a person in it. So just imagine that they're not sitting there. In box number one, we see the interior of a suburban home, upper middle class, kitchen table, but the person isn't there. Username on screen is, on screen is Lenora. In box number two, we're in a blue collar home in a northern state, nothing elaborate but warm. We see pictures of a family nearby, maybe on a fridge, a 30s-ish mom and dad and kids in the pictures. No one's sitting at the camera, username on screen, Cassie. Briefly, a couple people, just so you know, came in late. Um, the, the, Victoria's playing a character who's more like 72, okay? So don't worry about ages, we're not doing ages here. After a few moments, a new third box will pop open with my friend Johnny in it. Um, so you can come in, John. And whoever it is can be heard but not seen, their camera is off. And then we, oh, I got that wrong. You know what, da Johnny? Pop out again. I yeah, I, I was wondering because it says off screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Johnny. Screw you, people. <laughs> you dumb ass motherfuckers. You bitches. I guessed your stupid password, and now I'm here to ruin your special day. Christmas is stupid. Nobody gets born into a manger into hell with your lame ass consumerism. You want presents, huh? I got your presents right here. Stick this under the tree. <laughs> what do you got to say to that, you pathetic little, huh? Uh, oh. He forgot to turn on his camera, so he does. And we're going to look at Beal, a young man with a bandana, except imagine it's actually covering his face. He, start, he <laughs> stares at the screen, realizing he's all alone on this call because there's nobody in front of the camera in the other two boxes. Then he looks off screen. He's checking the time. Uh, and, he and click, he decides to leave the meeting. Box three will go. And we're back to our two unpopulated boxes until Cassie enters box <laughs> two and sits. Uh, She's mid-30s, dresses unpretentiously, hair in a ponytail, has a plate with a sandwich on it that she's going to eat, and go ahead. Mom. Mom. Mom, I'm here. Lenora comes Mom. in and sits down. Cass, sweetie, how are you? Uh, you know, nothing new. You? Yeah, I'm still dealing with these migraines. Merry Christmas, by the way. And a holly jolly to you. Sorry about your migraines. Not entirely your fault, dear. What's that you have there? Uh, PB and J. Splurging, huh? I have to eat things to make space. The turkey Dave got takes up half the fridge. There's only four of you. Why do you need such a huge turkey? You know how ShopRite gives you free turkeys at Christmas? Oh, right. Plus, we stock up because of COVID. So we go to the store once a week. That's it. Where's Dave and the kids? They'll be here. It's been a busy morning. He had to plow a lot of driveways. You know, he does it all winter long. It's Christmas. You can tell your husband to show up for a family event on Christmas. I know that. And the kids could use some discipline. Uh-huh. Ever going to give them a strong talk? Plenty of times. A couple of rules would be nice is all. You could start with them putting away the dishes after dinner. You know, the last time I was there, they just sat and watched you do it all. We have rules. And mm -hmm. Dave meandered around when he could have been helping. Okay, you're right. Okay, I could bear down on them all, be their worst enemy and squeeze every last bit of free labor out of them. But then they'd probably grow up to hate me and never show up for the Christmas Zoom. You're going a bit far, aren't you? <laughs> At least I'm here. That's more than I can say for the rest of them. Yeah. Why don't you just save the remain for Anya and Trevor, huh? I mean, Oh, I know, because they wouldn't take it. Me, I just, I take it, and then I take it, and take it, and take it, and then, ah, uh, it doesn't matter. 
anyway, if you still want me, if you still want to tell me I'm a bad mother and I don't do everything I should, then go ahead, stick it to me. Come on. No. no seriously, you might as well. Everybody else does. Who does? Everybody. I'm the black sheep of this family. No. I'm the laughing stock of this stupid town. How? Uh, nobody on the board of education cares what I say or think. They literally just talk past me ever since I brought up all that stuff about standardized tests. Well, screw them. I sent you those articles because they make a valid point and they're in peer reviewed journals. Well, I looked pretty foolish when nobody voted to support my proposal. It's a stupid town. You need to get out of that town. Easier said than done. These are the kind of people who probably voted against integration. I can't afford pro the property taxes for a smarter town. They probably voted against hot water. It doesn't matter because they run the board. Oh, gee. Well, then I guess you might as well give up, hit yourself in the head with a hammer, become as dumb as they are. I don't need to give up because I've already lost. Well, then there you are. And I don't need to feel judged by you on Christmas Day. It makes me want to run off to a corner and cry. God, you're mean, Mom. I just want you to stand up sometimes and not just take it. Well, I did. I stood up, and now I'm sitting. And I'm sitting here having a PB&J. I think they both lied to me about showing up. I think anything's possible with them. God, I hope not. It's been a shitty year, and it's only getting worse. I need them here with us. I'm sorry, sweetie. I'm sorry for going on. Don't apologize. What else can I say? How about uh, you're going to actually stop with the nagging and the criticizing once and for all, forever kaput? All right, then. You're actually going to stop with the nagging and the criticizing and the, I'm sorry, what else was it? Kaput? <laughs> Very funny. It's Christmas. And I am alone at 72. And I'm sorry about hurting you. I really am. And if I can change, I will. But at least understand, I don't have children here, my children, to celebrate with. Norman. I thought you invited Dad. Oh, I did. I just don't know if he's going to come. I'd love that. I really would. I miss us when we were all together. Yeah, before we fucked up. Oh, no. The blame game. Sorry. I guess I had some part in it too. Though really, to be truthful, dear, you kids pretty much caused the problem. Had you never been born, Charles and I could have been happy forever. <laughs> wow, did you, did you really just say that? I'm just joking, silly. Really? Really. But you're not funny. Not yet, but I'm trying it out. I read this article about how therapists should incorporate a little humor into their practice. Well, that won't work for you. You're a sincere but morose person. You can't be glib. Your patients will think you're on something. Where are they? God damn it, I just want everyone together for once on Christmas, one time. It's been years. Oh, and all you get is me. I feel so bad for you. Oh, stop saying things like that. It's how you make me feel. Not true. I may be a nudge, but you're hearing the voices of doubt in your own head. You've always had confidence issues. Tell me truthfully, do you have suicidal ideation? Only when you psychoanalyze me. So yeah, a lot. You're the one who really needs to stop with the jokes. Anya pops up in her own square. She's in a luxury apartment in Manhattan. Merry Christmas. Yay, there you are. Hey, gal. Sorry I'm late, I had stuff. What stuff? Stuff, mom, work. I've, I've been really busy the last few months. And I wanna know all about that, sweetie, but first, did you say Merry Christmas? <clears throat> I did. No, I'm so sorry, I have to stop for one second. What you meant to say was Merry Xmas. Did you say Merry Xmas? I did. Why? It's something that's going around. I mean, people used to write it on cards, but now it's sort of evolved into standard verbiage. I didn't realize. Yeah, well, the whole Christ thing is all wrapped up in patriarchy, not to mention the priesthood and the crusades and, <laughs> and all sorts of other problematic stuff. So Xmas <laughs> is the new... <laughs> nah, what's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. I just... 
I just could have seen it coming, that's all. No, oh, I get it. And your conformist <laughs> suburban split level, 2.5 children world, you probably think it constitutes a war on Christmas to say Xmas. I just thought it was funny. Uh-huh. I knew this is what it would be like. Okay, let's just relax. I'm getting us all together us. after two years of not getting together. Well, no, but you two got together a year ago, right? Well, sort of. Let's not get into it. I thought you had a good time in New York. I tried to make myself available to her. Wait, what's the point of traveling all that way with the kids just to run around town with your assistant? I set up events for you guys. Do you know how hard it is to get diplomats at the UN to meet with regular people? They're kids, Anya. They don't want that. <sighs> Maybe you should set goals for them. Maybe you should make a few and then tell me what to do. I mean, seriously, maybe you and Charlotte or whatever her name is should adopt and then you can critique my parenting. Okay, okay, that was unnecessary. I can't believe you went there, Cass, already. I can't believe you dragged us up to New York and spent no time with us. Yeah, well, just so you know, Charmin and I are no longer together. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. It's just happened. She moved out a few days ago. Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Anya. Sorry about that. I suppose David can find Hold on for one second. Dave, happened. you got to stop your video. Thanks. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Seriously. Uh, uh, whatever. I suppose David can finally stop making jokes about her name. What? Seriously. He kept asking as if she was, as if she was ultra soft. <laughs> so fucking funny. What is wrong with him? He's an adult. He's my husband. Mother, I love you. Happy holidays. Yes, happy holidays. Pax Vobiscum. Excuse me? Pax Vobiscum, it's Latin, from church, remember? Catholic church? I must have blocked it out. I remember, but what does it mean? Peace be with you. It's the only thing of value I took from those 20 years of Sundays, but it's still nice, don't you think? Yeah, it is. You know, they have church online too now. Do you know that? I attended a few of them, not Catholic, I'm done with that, but for all the obvious reasons. I'm now a, I'm now a Unitarian Universalist. For you, if you must worship a non-existent deity, it might as well be one that accepts people of all backgrounds. Yes, it's very inclusive. <laughs> What's funny now? <laughs> All I did was giggle. What is it? Uh, made me think of a joke I heard about <laughs> Unitarians. Okay, okay. So did you hear what happened to the Unitarian family that moved into the backyard, the backwards southern town? Somebody burned a question mark into their lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Unitarians are actually the nicest people. Yeah, I know, but it's just the joke is... So to imply that they don't have a defined set of strong core beliefs? Okay, it was a joke. It's problematic. It's Christmas! I woke up hours ago and put shit under the tree for the family, and I've been cooking for two days and nobody's coming over because of fucking COVID. I've started to forget what getting together with people's even like, and this is the second semester of having the kids, and they're teenagers, going to school from home sports, the prom, the play, the entire social lives, all that stuff we took for granted, it's gone. I mean, seriously, Miri woke up crying last night because she's never been kissed, never held a boy's hand. I mean, this shit's not normal. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm just, I'm spiraling. Let it out, dear. We're all hurting. Well, you can't tell right now because the camera only shows me from the chest up, but I've put on a lot of weight. Sweetie. No, really. I'm like a horse. I mean, imagine if I was wearing extra large pants stuffed with ricotta cheese. I mean, that's what my ass looks like. Come on, sis. Buck up. Excuse me? There's bigger issues going on than just your body. Anya, this is what's concerning her. We're suffering under a torrential downpour of bad decisions on a national level. I don't care about a national level. I'm, I've lost muscle tone. Don't you understand? I'm, I'm sitting on a huge pile of jello when it's me. And right now I just want to knock off a family-sized box of Chips Ahoy. I mean, I hate myself just so much. Ugh. I mean, Dave's lost all interest in me. I mean, what do you have to worry about? Politics? Whatever Rachel Maddow told you is really important? I mean, fuck all that. 
maybe if people like you spent more time engaged and voting and I vote. I, I just don't happen to always vote for who you vote for. Oh, then you're crazy. Oh, that's enough. <laughs> I swear. If it matters at all to you, I call this together for a reason. I'm not young and you're my babies. I mean, I know you're all growing up now and living your own lives, but you're still mine on Christmas and you agreed to put all those old axes aside and come together this morning for me as a gift to me. And I appreciate that. I love you for it. So let's not ruin it. Well said, Mom. Yes, totally. Just wish your father and Trevor could have joined. The kids will be on later. I promise. They're just, you know, they're just doing stuff. A new square, a new square pops up on screen. We see a sock puppet made to look like Santa Claus. It's being operated by Trevor off screen, who puts on a silly Santa voice. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jesus. Trev. Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, fucking believable. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, a little girl who's been bad. Take it <laughs> off, jerk face. Oh, come on, Anya. It's cute. It's terrifying. You could have given mom a heart attack. Oh, sweet, sweet boy, you do know how to make an entrance. Don't reward him. <laughs> what is it about Christmas you don't understand, Miss Warmth? That's what I want, one day out of the year. Mom, ignore her. Just let her be hateful and she'll <laughs> shrug it off. Trev, Trev, did you just make that one, the puppet? Yes, <laughs> yes. The, the little one, Santa's, Santa's been busy in his workshop. <laughs> I mean, when he hasn't been under the mistletoe playing grab ass with Mrs. Claus, Ooh. she's just ho, 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 ho. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Anya leaves Trev. the session. Trev, that was a little much. Christ, you know, like, I was just joking around. We're all adults here, and I had some eggnog. Well, you know how she is. Uptight. Maybe, but... She has sort of a good reason. What? Your job. She's on TV. She's a celebrity. Oh, come on. I'm serious, dear. She told me a while back she's always worried that somehow something inappropriate she might actually say or do on camera could make its way onto social media. Inappropriate? I was mildly inappropriate. All, all she did was turn her nose up and leave. What? She can't ever be seen acting offensively or tolerating offensive behavior. That's why she left. That way, if this was being recorded, the video showed that she didn't tolerate it. You know, you can record a Zoom, I've heard. It's even more paranoid than I thought. I mean, record this? Like, who would ever do that? Well, actually, I'm doing that. What? Why? Well, because I wanted to watch your reactions to Mr. Claus. I don't know. I, I thought it'd be funny. I, I need to amuse myself. <laughs> Are you still doing this right now? Recording? Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, turn it off. I look terrible. Okay, but you also need to choose not to enable recording participants. Fine, I will do that. How do I do that? But you call Anya up and you get her back here and don't tell her you recorded it. She'll never talk to any of us ever again. Yeah, mom's worried that if she gets promoted to network anchor, Anya will totally cut us off and deny we exist. No, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. How would denying we exist be any different than how she treats us now? <laughs> get going, Trevor. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's, you know, it's only going to make her feel justified in throwing a fit. No. Call her. Do I need to beg you seriously? I'll plead. I'll get on my knees. Oh, please, no. Trevor, go to your sister. Right. He grabs the cell phone and he walks away from the camera, but he's leaving his camera on. Anya's just being Anya. She'll come back. So, Mom, what's going on with you? I'm okay, baby. Did you get my email with the song for tonight? Yes, I got it. I thought it would be fun to sing a song as a family. You know, bring back the tradition. Yeah, it's what I miss most about our Christmases from before. Before, you know. Yes, well, that's the idea. But you seem on edge. Who isn't on edge? We live in a perpetual state of COVID depression. You don't have it? 
uh, I have kids coming at me with needs 24 seven. I don't have time for depression. Oh, where are they, by the way? The kids. I don't know. Well, sure you do. I've been to your house. They can't be out of earshot. You call for them to come over and talk to me. I'm not doing everything you say when you snap your fingers. They'll come when they come. And wait, what do you mean they can't be out of earshot? I mean, that's a crack about my house. Well, you think it's small, don't you? Does it matter what I think? You certainly don't consult me when you make choices. But you still get your digs in from time to time, like a small house, a husband and career you don't like. Stop! We're not fighting! Not then today. leave my life alone! I mean, I'm the one who stood by you through everything. I know. When Fiddle and Diddle were off doing whatever and not even bothering. Don't remind me. A new box pops up. There's no video or sound just yet, but the name's gonna read Charles. Oh my god. Your father. Oh, calm down. You invited him. I didn't think he'd show. Frankly, I'm surprised he didn't get the internet in that little shed of his. Probably <laughs> drank himself to sleep and woke up in a pool of urine. Oh God, can you hear us? Well, firstly, Lenora, my home is not a shed. It's actually an historic maritime preservation site. It is one of the oldest homes in Morrow Bay. I'm sorry. Tom. It's built small <clears throat> to conserve heat as were all of the seasonal mariners uh, in the mid 19th century. I didn't mean to. They kept in a ramshackle condition, yes, accurate to the period. And I haven't woken up in my own pee for some years now. Daddy, I love you. Likewise, little girl. I miss your aura. How were those kids? Oh, God only knows. I spend most of my time avoiding them, hiding in my bedroom. <laughs> oh, gee, I wonder what parent you learned that from. So where's the rest of the crew? Why are we not all well met? Trevor went off to bring Anya back to the meeting. Anya was here, but left. Hmm. Was she in a huff? Oh, yes. Quite a huff. Brilliant. What about politics or gender or the, uh, the politics of gender? Oh, nothing so high-minded as all that. I guess Trevor pissed her off. Bingo. That's my boy. <laughs> I think causes more social disruption than a foul-mouthed puppeteer. <laughs> well said. You know, the last time I talked with Ranya, hung up on me. She's on a tear. She's walking out on, on everybody. Maybe you and Trevor should avoid angering her. She has a difficult job, you know, having to stay composed and in control every night on the air. Well, it's true, true. Plus, she's got to say all that meaningless claptrap. It seems like every time I tune in, she's on a tirade about some celebrity who said something she deems offensive, and she's crusading to get him fired or sent into exile or something. She works hard and gets paid very well. Really? Compared to whom? Not comparing. I, mean, I work hard. Kids are hard. Gee, I would have no idea. And COVID's hard. This is news. Len, give her a break. Give Anya a break and don't call me Len. Mom, just calm down. I'm not getting involved in this discussion as it's 15 years ago. Well, you got us all together, which is pretty much like taking us back 15 years. Cute, Charlie. Please don't fight, guys. We're not fighting. Look, this was an interesting experiment, Lenora. What? You're leaving already? Like, the other kids aren't even here. All we're doing is torturing her. Mm. Look, I'll call you later, sweetie, maybe when the kids and David are available. Sure, whatever. Look, we tried, okay? All right, we gave it our best effort, and it's Christmas. We all got other plans, and oh, I said gifts, by the way. Late, I know, but uh, you're gonna like what I got Sam and Mary. Mom, could you give us a minute? What do you mean? Could you take a bathroom break or get a cup of tea or something? Really? Yeah. Well, Charlie, I don't know when we'll see each other again. Could be years, I guess. Maybe not until someone dies. And well, actually, who knows how long before we'll actually have real funerals again with this damn virus. But maybe never. I don't know. I do know that I've wanted to have some sort of relationship with you since the divorce. Not just for the kids, but for all of us. We were a tight family, despite our issues. I mean, I love being on my own again and being out there making new friends. But I sometimes feel like I don't want to fly too far from home. You know what I mean? Sure. 
but I've realized your life is your own and you bear certain resentments from me going back decades. I bear them for you. Okay, I I've said enough, I'll take a walk. Menorah leaves oh. the screen, she's just walking away from the camera. Oh look, the bird feeder's gone empty. I'll, I'll go get some feed. God, Dad, you make me so angry. What did I, what did I do wrong? She basically laid it all out for you and you bore her soul and you said nothing. Well, no, I said something. You said, sure. I don't know, God damn it. I'm not an improvisational person. I mean, I only feel comfortable with emotions when I'm, when I'm writing. That's why I told you to write something out. And I did. So why didn't you say that? You, you could read what you wrote. Well, I thought I would. I planned to. I thought maybe after we had all been together for a while, we started to relax and maybe I could suggest to her that she and I talk in private. I know I'm good at a room, baby. I know I am. I told you the story about how I uh, proposed, didn't I? You were on your knees amidst the ruins. It was beautiful. We were in Athens. There's maybe three minutes at dusk when you can get the sun to shine through that arch in the Parthenon. On your knees amidst the ruins. Totally. It sounds, it sounds perfect when you say it like that. That's because it's the title of your poem about the proposal, On My Knees Amidst the Ruins. Oh, right. No, yes, right. That was for my first book. I knew it sounded familiar. Jeez. Do you remember who I am? Who you are? I don't have dementia. Oh, uh, well, I wonder. Look, I freeze up, okay? I, I can do things on paper that I can't do in life. And it's always been that way, and it always will be. I just, I just thought if we were all together, I would have that feeling again. That feeling that goes with us, having us all together. You wanted us together so you'd feel endorsed? Maybe you, maybe you don't want her back very much. No, I do, I do. I don't know if I'd buy that now. I should have never told you anything. No, you shouldn't have. No, you shouldn't have. Because if this isn't what you want and really believe in, uh, after all this time, then- It is, it is. Yeah, in this moment, maybe, then maybe tomorrow it's not what you really want and you leave her again, right? Mm -hmm. I mean- God, I hope she's not listening to this. She could be standing right next to the computer. She's not. She's the most discreet person in the history of the world. It's true. She's impeccably discreet. That's one of the things I love most about her. Don't tell me. Tell her. I can't tell anybody anything. That's, that's, that's why I write. If you want her back, you're going to need to do more than pull a crumpled up piece of paper out of your pocket and read her some scribbled verses about her beauty. That's not what I intended to do. I typed it. <laughs> then use it. I will. I will when the time is right. And when's that going to be? I mean, you're how old? Old enough to fear embarrassing myself in front of my family right before the end. Uh, hold on for one second, guys. I'm sorry. Jelani, can you turn your video off? Jelani, you know, thank you. I'm sorry. Go ahead, guys. Okay. Well, you used to tell me every moment is an opportunity. Yeah, to write a poem or a story, not humiliate yourself. All righty then, I've finished feeding the birds look, and I'm coming uh, back right, now. Look, I'm going to go. That'll give you a chance to talk to her. Say what? I don't know. Just no, You got to do this yourself. How about I send you the poem? No bad idea. Well, you can tell me if it's good. I don't want your poem. Agreed. Charles leaves the meeting, popping his box off. Christ. Oh. He left, huh? He'll be back. Is that what he told you? Boxes pop open for Anya and Trevor, so they're returning. Oh, there they are. Oh, We're back. Yes. Yes, and now it'll just be me and the kids and no Charles. Reminds me of something. All right, our marriage. We're back. Hello. Yes, we are. Wait, Dad left? Let's not talk about it. So what did you two resolve in your own time anyway? Tell her, Trev. Oh, I'm uh, officially woke. Excuse me? Well, we had a little talk and Anya kind of like set me straight about some stuff. <laughs> oh God, I hope you're kidding. Stay out of this, Cass. 
I like my brother the way he is, flawed. Please don't change him. No, 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 it's totally cool. I mean, I, I acknowledge that I often use language that's... Um, Misogynist? Yeah, and it's, and it's hurtful. Good. Yeah, and, and she showed me some videos about privilege and gender. Okay, you don't need to explain it to her, Trev. <laughs> huh, well, huh. That's funny because the way I remember it, when you guys were younger, she used to beat the shit out of you. I mean, if anybody was ever oppressed, it was you, bro. Do you remember me pulling you out of a washing machine when you were five? Ooh, kind of. Remember who put you in? I don't, I guess I blocked it out. Stay out of it, Cassie. At least I do what a sister's supposed to do for my little brother. I teach. Oh. That's good. That's good, Anya. I just wish I could have gotten either of you to guide him when he was young, but you weren't interested. A lot of Trevor's more serious issues could have been mitigated, you know. I have to make a call. Anya leans out of the shot. She's making a fake call. Wow, Mom. You, you just critiqued all of us in one stroke. Yeah. They failed as mentors, and I have serious issues. All right. Where are those kids of yours, Cassie? Who cares? I want to know why you said that. Oh, stop being dramatic. She just wants to know why you chose this moment to lash out. I didn't lash out. It's just a fact, Trev, that you have certain problems that stem from specific childhood experiences. Okay, even I don't blame Cassie and Anya for my drinking, so mom, so you don't do it, all right? Okay, look, how about if I just apologize and we move on? After all, I sent presents to everyone a week ago and I know you got them and I want to know if you like them. Are we good? Apology accepted? There wasn't one. You just proposed apologizing. You didn't do it. Uh-huh. So? As I said, how about if I apologize and we move on? That's an apology, Mom. No, it's not. Uh, uh, that's not, sorry, that's not an apology, Mom. Well, I thought I was doing the right thing by trying to bring the family together after a long time apart in the wilderness, and instead I get harangued by you three. Guys, should we wrap up this meeting? I, I don't know about you, but I've got a lot of show prep materials to read and producers who need me. Well, I don't have either of those, but I do have laundry. Yeah, I have mac and cheese that I'm planning to make for lunch. So then it's a wrap? Look, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings, all of you. It's just the mother in me always wants to give you advice on living. Another way to put that would be to say critiquing. Judging. Judging is more like it. Microaggressing. Mm. Oh, right! I promise not to critique, judge, nor microaggress any of you. Because I love you. Great! Thanks, Mom. Good. Cool, because I've got your present right here. He pulls out a package. Me too. I go first. Wait. Well, you have to guess before you open it. Okay. She's got her package is clearly some kind of wrapped book. Well, it's a book. And you know I love cooking and kitcheny stuff, so must be a cookbook. Yes, who'd have thought after graduating with honors from Brown you'd go on to make so many dinners? Hmm, okay, not sure what that means, but um I guess uh, I'll guess it's that new book from Mario Batali that I, I got the first one a few years ago and I, I made stuff for Dave and the kids and they totally went crazy for it. Not exactly. Okay, then maybe the sauces book that I showed you the last time we were at Barnes and Noble. No? Just open it. Okay, then let's see. She opens up, it's the book. She cannot see the cover yet. She's holding it below the camera, looking at it, like, confused. Okay. What's, what's this? What'd you get? Uh, your own worst enemy, breaking the habit of adult underachievement. That's what you want me to read? It's well reviewed. Yeah? Uh, wow, it was written 20 years ago. You just happened to read a recent review of it? Well, I don't know, baby. If it's not your cup of tea, don't bother. I'll open mine. Go ahead. 
He opens his inside the box. It was just a little envelope, which he opens. It's a credit card. A credit card. It's a gift card for $2,000. <laughs> Jeez, Mom, I mean, uh, thanks. Wow, that's nice. Uh, is, is there a card stuck between the pages of my book? Sorry, dear, but perhaps reading it might benefit you to a degree far beyond $2,000. <laughs> but I can't use it to buy stuff. So can I spend the money on like anything? No, dear, just therapy. I'll email you a list of therapists I think highly of. There's a guy named Laughlin who does amazing work with multiple personality disorders. But why would I want to be treated by him? No, you're right. Maybe he's not the right person. There's Sarah Bloom. She had a patient who had been cross-dressing for years, and she worked with him using some really groundbreaking techniques. Now he's done with all that and happily living his life. I'm, I'm not a drag queen. I am a puppeteer. Of course, sweetie. But you'd like to be able to, you know, drop all that and just be yourself at some point, wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't, because I love puppeteering. Let's talk about this one later then, okay? One on one. Like I, I had this tremendous fear that you'd do something insane like this and you did it. And I, you know, I was so happy over the last year when we weren't speaking at all. Anya, care to open yours? No, thanks. Trev, it's not quite true that we haven't spoken at all over the last year, is it? What do you mean? Well, I don't want the girls to think that that's the whole truth. Back in February, you asked me to give you $2,000, remember? So you could purchase some new equipment for your little theater. It's camera equipment so that I could make a video of, of the show when I was gonna apply for a grant. Whatever it was. Well, instead of giving you another $2,000 after the many thousands I have given you over the last 10 years or so, it occurred to me that maybe you deserve the opportunity to change your life. Maybe this would allow you to get on a program Son, I don't think you're happy doing what you do. And every time we talk, you're on the edge of tears and you've talked more than fancifully about suicide. Oh, you think everyone wants to commit suicide. Basically, she gives you two choices, accept her advice or kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Trevor, am I right? Fuck you, mom, that was like years ago. Maybe when you have a child, which I hope you do, you'll have some idea of what it means to want to help that person avoid serious pitfalls. So that's what this is about, right? If I don't stop puppeteering, I'll never straighten up and fly right and get married and have your next grandkid, right? I just want what's best for you. I just... Hey, I'm gonna get through this. I'm not gonna bail and I love my sisters and it's Christmas and it's Christmas. It's Christmas and I'm getting through this. So whatever you want, mom, you can say whatever you want because I, I can take it. Okay, Anya, okay, open it. Fuck no. Anya, it's just a present, there's a present. There's no need to worry. Oh, uh, we both know it's more than a present, mom. It's a time bomb, coldly calculated to destroy my world and leave me in pieces on the floor. It's a teddy bear. What? Open it. She opens it and it's a teddy bear. What's the catch here? Is something going to come out of it? Does it speak? You said yourself a long time ago that you're making great money and you can buy anything you want. So I don't know. I just thought you'd like it. Also, it's been so long since I've seen you and we can't hug. People hug teddy bears. I'm aware. Anya looks around, then, see, then sets the bear on a spot, maybe a shelf nearby. We, she sees it as an ornament. Well, it'll always be there for you. I don't come to this room much. Well, now you've got a reason. I'm not using this for therapy. Alrighty then. Yeah, you know what I'm using it for? I have an idea. Um, if you're taking suggestions, I could really use some groceries. I mean, like Dave's lost work and we're basically down to one working car and I- no, That's kids not are what I'm thinking. I am going to one of those therapists who help you revive old memories of abuse. You have any thoughts about that? No. Trev, you need to stop. Is that the spiked eggnog, what you're drinking? Yes. Mm. Sweetheart, 
What's really wrong? Maybe uh, you're the person who should answer that question. What are you trying to say? I'm saying I'm going to walk into a room with one of these like repressed memory therapists and who knows what they might pull out of me from way, way back in my childhood. You know, as a therapist, I happen to be very familiar with this area of psychology and you ought to know it's been largely discredited. <laughs> oh, not in my book. Come on, Trevor, nobody abused you growing up. Shit, sorry. Uh, wait, Trevor, are you saying, wait, you, were abused? We shared a room all through high school. The only person who ever touched your dick was you. And yeah, you definitely abused it. There were like two years there where you were going at it from dusk till dawn. <laughs> what do you mean that kind of abuse? Maybe you'll uncover a memory of yourself. Oh my God, you were like the least loving sister ever. And then I saw this huge hand attacking my private. That's enough, Kathy. <laughs> Yeah, let's take the level of this conversation up a notch, shall we? Oh. Trevor walks out of the yeah. shop. Trev. He's such a diva. You knew he was drinking, why push him? Come back, Trevor. Trevor comes back. Hold on, you come back. He puts on a new sock puppet. It looks like a little boy. He adopts a child's voice. Look at me. I'm an innocent little boy living in the suburbs of Philadelphia. My daddy's a writer and my sisters are also cute and lovable. And my mommy, my sweet, sweet mommy is a therapist. And she's got lots of answers for everybody's problem. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she's the expert on all of us. I'm not sitting through this. Mom, Trevor's clearly got something to say. Oh yes, little Schmever of 24 Englewood Lane and Cherry Hill has plenty to say. He's the forgotten child. You see, after all the money and time mommy and daddy spent on his big sister's acting classes, and then all the time they spent worrying about sister number two, who was always running off with this boy and that boy and needing money and needing so many interventions for stealing mommy's birth control. Trevor, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Stop it, Cass. You're dead. You're dead. What's that? You're angry with somebody named Trevor? I can't imagine who that might be because I'm Schmever, Schmever, Schmeppleton, and I'm fucking six. And you're dead. She's young. Oh, David, David, get off your ass. What's going on? I'm doing something. Yeah, porn most likely. Give me the damn car keys. Why? We're driving to Trevor's place. I'm going to fucking kill him. Are you crazy? He lives like three hours away. So we better leave now before he gets away. What are you doing with that? I'm loading it. She's got a gun. Well, good luck with that. It doesn't work. What do you mean it doesn't work? It hasn't worked for years. I never cleaned it. Plus, we don't actually have any bullets for it. Then why did you show it to me? Because you got scared when there was a bear in the goddamn neighborhood like two years ago. I, I thought it would reassure you. So I'm, ho I'm holding a useless gun? Yep. Cassie throws the gun away and slumps down. Tre and David walks away. David, you can go back to your fucking porn. Okay, will do. Oh, adults live such complicated lives. Oh, hey, you can just shut the fuck up. Cassie, Trevor. calm down, for God's sake. It's Christmas. Christmas! And sweetheart, it was years ago. I knew all along you were stealing my birth control. Did? Yes. Why didn't you say anything? Yes, mommy, why? Trevor, you keep that thing on a leash or I'll take a private jet to your house and kill you myself. I didn't say anything because I knew you were going through so much and I didn't want to make things worse. Maybe there's a lot of things that as a parent, you just have to let go. Plus I studied adolescent behavior patterns for my thesis. Nothing surprises me. Really? Nothing. Uh, right. That's how I know you never intended to shoot anyone with that gun, which doesn't work. 
and which you totally knew all along doesn't work. No, I, I thought it worked. Of course, in your conscious mind, that seems true. But in your unconscious mind, you know David told you a long time ago that it didn't. Huh. But she just said she didn't know. It really wasn't such a big deal. How can you say that? I'm her mother. I've known her forever. I think Kathy needs help. Well, I'm right here. Thanks, Mom. No, real help from someone else. There's a reason doctors don't treat on their own children. Well, maybe they don't love them enough. Oh, no, it's not that. Look, I just, I want to forget what happened, okay? I mean, it's been a tough morning, a lot of pressure. Plus, we've been trapped in this house forever because of the damn COVID. I mean, don't even ask me about the kids. And by the way, I've been having cramps like you wouldn't believe and not sleeping due to migraines and like... I know that feeling. It's just like, it's like being under siege. I know, baby. I miss you, Mom. I wish I could hug you. Uh, Trevor brings into shot a new puppet. Puppet number two is made to look like Lenora. He puts on a fake female voice. So, there's, so basically, there's going to be two puppets here. Trevor's Schmever in one hand and Trevor <laughs> playing mommy in the other. You get it. Here we go. Hello there, little boy. You have showered me with love, which I choose to ignore. This makes me sad. And I see you haven't done your chores. What chores are those? I cleaned my room and walked the dog and picked up all my sister's messes and I, and I, but you left your dirty clothes on the family room floor and I told you to wash them. But mommy, those weren't just any dirty clothes. Those were my socks. And I'm turning them into puppets so that someday I can use them to build a career in the arts. Look. He brings in, the Schmever puppet brings in a few other loose shots, uh, socks. Son, you're an idiot, and you think puppetry is a career. I need a drink. Mommy, Mommy. keep going, I'm sorry. Mommy, you're drinking alcohol. Yes, Schmever, because I have lots of problems. My husband's stooping his publisher's assistant, who's barely legal, and now my son says he wants to be a puppeteer. That's the last straw. Lenora Puppet picks up scissors. <laughs> What are you doing with those? The Lenora puppet cuts the loose socks in half. There. Now you're sure to grow up like a real boy. No, mommy, no! Nora reaches for her mouse, and Trevor disappears. He's gone. <laughs> oh, what happened? Did he leave? I decided he needed to take a break. <laughs> you cut him out of the Zoom? He was working himself into a froth. Yeah, but it's Christmas, and he's clearly going through something really bad, and you reject him and put him out of the family? Sweetheart, I didn't put him out of the family, just the Zoom. I'm calling him. Let him be. She picks up her cell phone and leaves the camera. So, what else is new? I don't know. Was that it for David? We're not gonna see him? Ugh, there's a lot going on. Should I ask? No. You know, you make it hard for me to help you, baby, if you won't talk about it. I know. You may not remember this, but I was once given an award from the American Association of Family Therapists for Lifetime Achievement. Oh, God, don't remind me. Of what? The speech. Your infamous speech? Infamous? At the awards ceremony? You really don't remember that, do you? Uh, you got up and you started off by saying all this stuff about how when you get out of school, it was really hard to start your own practice. Uh, when you got out of school, it was really hard for you to start your own practice and even harder for women at the time. Yeah, I wanted to say something empowering. And how a lot of practitioners at the time made you feel foolish for wanting to branch out on your own and experiment with new methods. Right. And how you didn't listen to those doubters. Instead, you forged your own path and built up your practice and succeeded. That's right. And the audience felt great about that. Felt real good. A real 
zero to hero story, the underdog we could all celebrate. Yeah. Yeah, but you didn't stop there. After that, you buoyed by your accolades, you left your written speech behind and you started ad-libbing. Something just came over you and, and you pulled the microphone out of the holder and you walked around with it. And I think it was just supposed to be like a short little speech. People wanted to get back to their food, but you walked around like a nightclub comic working the crowd oh. and you pointed out the specific people you had mentioned earlier in the speech, the ones you said didn't believe in you and you said their names. And, and they didn't like it, being publicly shamed for having made this mistake of doubting you. And, and, and you kind of got nasty about it. I don't remember any of that. Really? Really? Because I'm sure everybody else does. And, and nobody, not one colleague, came up to talk with you after that. Like, they were all so angry at you. That was a long time ago. And I don't see why you'd remember it better than I do. And I think you've totally mischaracterized it. Really? Yep. I think you're the only person there who saw it that way. Huh. Anya returns to the camera and Trevor's <laughs> box pulls back up with him in the shot. Okay, um, it's cool. I'm glad you're back. What were you discussing? Doesn't matter. We were talking about the speech. You mean the speech. Mm-hmm. Oh. Holy shit, yeah. Way to alienate like every friend you ever had, Mom. <laughs> yeah, not your best day. I'm surprised, surprised they didn't storm the podium, yank the awards out of your hands, and take turns beating you to death with it. <laughs> well, I guess we just all have our own versions of what happened that night. No, we have our version, and I don't know what the fuck you have. Charles pops into the Zoom. Hey, folks. <clears throat> I'm sorry to be gone so long. I was on my way to the John, when suddenly I remembered I told my neighbor I'd, I'd help him jumpstart his car. Okay. So I had to find the cables and all that, and normally I, I keep them in the trunk, but um, they weren't there. So I had to get a hold of another pair. You don't need to explain. No, 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 no. It's just that, so <laughs> then the pair I borrowed from this other neighbor, they were damaged and kind of a safety risk. Anyway, well, long story short, we, uh, we worked it out. So what's been going on? Another oh. Zeppler family Christmas. Well, that, that sounds just fine. I'm glad you brought us all together, Lenora. Oh, almost forgot. Thanks for the money, Dad. It came yesterday. Yeah, ditto. Really hit the spot. There was money? Um, well, yeah. I was recently afforded the opportunity to spread the wealth. Really? Yeah, a total surprise. See, you, you remember those first years I was teaching down at uh, Alabama State? Tried to put them out of my mind, but yeah, I do. Mostly I remember going to endless barbecues and tailgate parties for a bunch of crackers who think football is the highest calling of America's academic institution. Yeah, I know. I felt that way too. But schmoozing with department heads is how you move up in that system, and it got us to Michigan. After moving, after three years. Right, but... A couple of months ago, I found out that Alabama State had put away a, a pension money for me. I never realized. And it sat in some dusty old account for decades until that school changed pension plans, at which point the money is swept into some index fund that was heavily invested in, of all things, personal protective equipment, <laughs> COVID stuff. And you know, that's just skyrocketed in value. So. Decades later, out of nowhere, I get this letter saying it's worth like 50 grand and all I had to do was sign for it. Yup. Thank God somebody profited from the Rona. So I gave Casey and Trev some market around money. You sent them checks for Christmas? Oh well, yeah. I mean, they had some needs. And I knew you were doing quite well. I mean, it's all over the news. You signed a new contract with the network and, and there may be a book deal. So this fund that you suddenly found out about? Is a total surprise. Funny how it's money you put away back when we were married and then during the divorce, I thought we went through every scrap of financial paper that no, we had. No, 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 it's nothing like that. And now it's yours. To give as presents to our children. Not all your children. I had no idea you would want or need that money. Anya, are you, you're angry about this? 
Anya? You know, I just want to say, uh, when I was 15, we went to a carnival at the lake in Hammerford. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the lake. And dad, you were short on cash for some reason. Well, okay, so you were always short on cash, but we never ate out the whole summer and you couldn't afford to send me to camp. So with nothing to do and a whole summer to kill, I dragged those two old mattresses out of the garage and put them under my window like a trampoline and jumped out my window for fun. Well, you were ingenious. Yes, I was. You guys did nothing all summer. At least I created a little excitement for myself. You have always been a trailblazer. I think so. Yeah, did your own thing. Damn right, and I let my stupid siblings use my mattress trampoline too. Did I like not thank you or something? And then we went to that carnival and you know how I love carnivals and rides. And they had the golden serpent there, remember? Best Ferris wheel ever super high and it towered over the lake and I had been looking forward to it since the spring and suddenly you wanted to save money. So you took them on the ride and left me. When I asked you why, you said, you always get to fly, baby. You left me there to save what, five bucks? And your excuse was that I already got to fly on my mattress? Charles, are you going to address what Anya just said? Who's acting like a fucking therapist? You were there, by the way. You said nothing the whole time. You punished me for being industrious, for doing something good for myself. Why? I don't know. That's not good enough. I thought I was being fair. You weren't. Making things equal. So you, you have always had success. You've always been creative and inventive, and these, these are qualities to be proud of. And I am proud of myself, but you weren't. You preferred Trevor and Cassie because they were needy, and you still do. But look but, where you, oh, sorry, sorry. No, that's okay, Dad, <laughs> but look where you are now. Yeah, you've had luck in your career. Yeah. Fuck. I paid my way through school. I went to LA and sucked up to people I hate. When I got the first on-camera job in Santa Barbara, Trevor, you came out to visit me and, and, and all you did was drink and get high. I had a big party for my colleagues and you made a fool of yourself. And not only that, but you went around telling everybody all these stories about me to, to make me look bad. I handed you a bottle and stuck you in a closet to get rid of you. Cassie, you're no better. You both still or fuck ups. Ouch. I'm getting the puppets. And then good old dad comes along with your reward. Found money, cheese. Now I remember why I hardly ever talk to you people. I will send you a check. Don't. I made a mistake back then and now, the, the entire three decades in between. I gave a life to writing and it cost you kids. You the most, Anya, but I, I will send you something, Anya. Save your money, for God's sake, you live in a shed. Whoa. Yes, Adeline. Actually, it's more like an outhouse. Come on, Anya. No, 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 she can say that, it's, it's fine, really. She has anger and I can handle that. And for the record, Anya, you are not the first person to compare my home to an outhouse. After all, it does have a rather large, half moon carved into the exterior wooden facade, which is actually quite true to the period for seasonal mariners in the 19th century. So, you know, it's cool. Well. Well. I suppose I ought to call this meeting to a close before things get any darker. They can't. Really, you're closing up shop? I had so much more to say, but clearly now isn't the time. Wait a minute. Maybe someone else who has more to say. Dad? What, honey? Isn't there something you want to say? No. But we're all here together and mom's no, here. And no. No? Nope. Not a zip. You hear me? 
What are you two talking about? Nothing. Nothing, Nothing, apparently. Then I'm ending this meeting. She's trying to leave it. Ugh. No. God damn it. I can't do this. There's something I need to talk with you all about. I never have all you three kids in one place, so... Love me or hate me, there's something you should know. I don't hate you, Mom. Could have fooled me, but here goes. I've been diagnosed with leukemia. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> Mom. Yeah. They probably would have found it sooner, but nobody's going to doctors these days for routine checkups because nobody wants to sit in a fucking doctor's office and get COVID. But anyway, I finally went. It's either stage two or three. Fuck it. There's more tests scheduled, but the long and short of it is that <clears throat> even if all of you were to agree to a meet next Christmas, which seems highly unlikely, I cannot guarantee that I can be. I, 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 I can't take this. David, David, get in here. What? I, I need you. You always need me when I'm busy. Just get over here. I, I'm, I'm almost done. Just, just give me two minutes. Oh, for Get it. Take all the time you need to masturbate. Holy shit. Did you say that on Zoom? Go on, Mom. I want to know the details. I don't know enough yet. I'd rather not discuss timelines. I, I told you not to use those chemicals. What? That shit you used to clean everything in the house with chlorine in it and for formaldehyde. And I gave you that book about cleaning products years ago and how they poison you. I told you to read it. Actually, according to my oncologist, my cancer is likely the result of a genetic predisposition. But thank you for blaming my lifetime of bad cleaning decisions. In any event, I talked with my attorney and she said I should make certain changes to my estate documents and clarify my wishes. I do not want to talk about your will. Yeah, you're going to get through this, Mom. I want to know more about your condition. Not now. Not on Christmas. Honestly, I didn't anticipate bringing this up all today. I was just hoping to have us all happily together for was once our warmest holiday. It's been years. That's why I invited your dad, to feel like we felt a long time ago, when we were five people living in the same house. Charlie, why haven't you said anything? Dad? I feel so guilty. For what? For breaking up our family. I'm not asking you to feel sorry. I know, I know, and that is what makes you so goddamn brave. Oh, Anya, sweetie. I wish we could hug. You do? I'm not made of steel, you asshole. Oh, God, whoa, kids. Shit, I'm, I'm sorry. Anya turns away so she can cry privately. Yeah. Yeah, come back here, yeah. Oh, only you can call me that. Remember when you used to hide under the sheet and I would say that until you answered, Ma? Those were the good old days before Hansel and Gretel crashed the party. We're still our first, Anya. I'm sorry, I'm so cold. No, baby. Mm. I am an ice queen. Everyone says so, including my shrink. I don't have empathy. The studio even made me take a sensitivity training course. Oh, I had to do that when I taught preschool. Which group were you learning not to be mean to? Was it a racial thing or a gender thing or like? It was every group. Mm. The course was tailored to me. Apparently I'm mean to everybody. I see. Well, you know, sweetie, we can't hug you right now, but there is someone who can. She thinks, suddenly she notices the teddy bear, I mean Anya, and she picks it up. Thanks, Mom. So, brass tacks. Who wants to be my executor? Someone has to divvy up my assets after I'm gone. It would have to be, it would have been you, Charlie, but yeah, I, obviously. I understand. I understand. 
Interesting. So who's doing it? It's a powerful position. If there's things not assigned to anyone in my will that you've always had your eye on, like my record albums, it was Silver Candelabra I got from Grandma, then you can walk away with that. Oh God, I refuse. Yeah, me too. You know, mm -hmm. you're living forever and that's all there is to it. Plus the candelabra's gross. If I get my hands on it, I'll have it melted down. Oh, what's wrong, Charlie? You have to, you have to fight this, Lynn. After all, it's, it's not right. I'm, I'm the oldest, I'm the man. I, I should go first. That's not all you should do, Dad. You should talk to Mom. Not the time, Cass. What are you going on about? Dad still loves you, Mom. He's been trying to work up the courage to ask you to take him back. Jesus, that's not true, Cassie. It's the God's honest truth. He even wrote you a poem. You stop, stop. Okay, a few days ago, a few days ago, I called Cassie and we got into a discussion about you and I shared with her some of my feelings, my confused feelings. There was no confusion, you love her. Well, that's not what I said. The poem is titled, I Love You, Lenora. Wow, yeah, that's pretty definitive. Are you gonna read it to her? But no, no. Then I will, I have it right here. You can't, you can't do that, you have no right. She pulls okay. out a piece of paper. Here we go. Stop, I don't wanna hear it, Cass. <sighs> you don't? Of course not. Your dad's right. You have no right to violate his trust. It would be grossly insensitive and make me deeply ashamed of you. Fine, if that's what you want. It is. Well, there it is again, Lynn. What? Your legendary discretion. <laughs> I had been missing it. Uh, I'll send this back to you, Dad. Send it back? No, no, I've, I've got a copy. Oh, I, I couldn't help but make a few corrections. Your grammar's for shit. And how could you be a writer for all these years and misspell words like vivacious and resplendent? Stop! You, you're basically, you're saying the whole poem. <laughs> right. Sorry. Uh, okay, I uh, guess I just want to fix everything that's been wrong ever since you guys split. That's not for you to do, sweetie. Plus, your father can talk to me anytime in private. This meeting is about Christmas. Exactly, exactly. And anyways, I'd be a fool to think your mom is just sitting around single. I'm sure she's got a full dance card. Right, Lenora? I don't really know how to answer that, Charles. I'm. A new box open up, opens up and we see Beale from before still wearing the bandana leaning into the camera behind him. An enhanced background shows flames and a raging inferno. Fuck you, Christmas buttholes. This is the end of your precious little suburban world. The Lord of Fire, Beezlebub, crushes you. <laughs> Don't you get it, piss bags? You are nuked. Shit upon. Fuck Christmas. Fuck Jesus. Fuck family. Who are you? Bitch. I'm the royal lord of damnation, and I am taking a steaming dump all over America's favorite holiday. Oh, I know what this is. He's a Zoom bum. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, you pathetic piece of shit. Charlie, you want to come let's not make him any angrier. What, Charlie? Don't piss me off, or I might just show up outside your little historical outhouse and more obey sometime. How do you know where I live? Oh, the Lord of Damnation knows all, asshole. And when I knock on your tiny door, I might just bring my little friends, if you know what I mean. Oh, really? You got one of these? She pulls out her gun. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cassie, you're scaring me. Just, we just turn them off, Lenora. You control the meeting. Oh, right. Hold on, let me see. She fiddles with her mouse and Beale's box disappears. There. Huh. Great. Good job, Mom. 
Now I wish we were recording this. I could totally have my staff trace it back to whatever cave that booger lives in and dock the shit out of him. Bill pops up again in another box. This time he's got a video playing behind him that shows a boot crushing a woman. It's like a gift that plays over and over. You didn't kill me! <laughs> <laughs> you dumb bitch. I'm gonna crush you like the stupid pig you are. Die, mama. Die! Hey, you go to hell. You go to hell, you bag of shit. Charlie, there's no need. I'll just... <sighs> but nothing happens. He's still there. There! You, you lose! Uh, that, you can't delete this man. The superior male of the species. I dominate you and all like you. Mom, mom, I've heard this can happen. They're like a virus. And, and once they gain entry, you can't get rid of them. No one can silence Bill. Bill will be heard eternally. Try something else, mom. Okay. She works her mouth. He pulls out a whistle. I will torment you with he this. Blow the whistle when his sound is cut off. He cannot be heard. He can only be seen. Good one, Len. Yeah, it seems I can't control his volume. Do you think he knows? <laughs> he keeps blowing the whistle. He doesn't. He hasn't realized. <laughs> Let's not tell him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> I, I wonder where people like that come from. Russia. Or the dark web. Or maybe he's just some poor sad guy who's out of work due to COVID and lives in his parents' basement in Poughkeepsie. Or Russia. Either way, let's not start feeling sorry for this punk. He tried to terrorize us. He just picked us at random. Who knows? You know, <laughs> some of them are political and some of them are into porn and some are just trying to like impress their friends. Like they're they're like a Zoom bomb gang. Huh. Well, that's funny. We should do that. What? Start our own Zoom bomb gang. Who would we bomb? Nazis. Nazis. We could start bombing them. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, we we they, they wouldn't expect that. Like they're doing like some kind of hateful meeting on yeah. Zoom, and we and 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 and, and when we bomb it, it'd be like a hoot. Yeah. Do you think Nazis meet on Zoom? And I kind of assume they meet in person because they don't believe COVID exists and they're not social distancing. That's a good point. Bill has stopped ranting. He seems to realize he can't be heard. Angling, angrily fiddling with his mouse, he accidentally drops his mask for a second, then pulls it back up over his face. I think he figured it out. I'll probably leave eventually. Sad, though. It's kind of a lost opportunity. What do you mean? I feel sorry for him. Lenora unmutes Beal. Young man, you realize that we're recording this and we can trace it back to you, right? Shut up, lady. You don't know who I am. Actually, my daughter Anya is a well-known news personality. Do you recognize her? <laughs> you're Anya Zeppler. I hope you're not a fan. Uh, I never watch your channel. Doesn't surprise me. You can't trace me. Sure I can. I have access to the best IT people in the world. And they'll look at this tape and see where you dropped your mask. And they'll run a facial recognition search involving all sorts of media and government databases. And if you've ever been arrested, gotten on a plane or used a bank machine, we'll find you and expose you. There won't be one person on this earth who doesn't know what a hateful thug you are. You can kiss your job and your reputation goodbye. Please don't. Look, I, I was, I was just fucking around. I mean, the other guys put me up to it. Look, I, I won't bother you any longer. I, 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 I promise. Wait a minute. Who me? Yes, you. What is your name? Um, Joe. Your real name. But she said she's going to ruin me. I will not let her if you tell me your real name. Okay, it, it's, it's Jake. Uh, how can I go? 
Jake, I noticed in some of your images, as well as your words, that you seem to be angry at a certain group of people. What do you mean? I mean, you're angry at women. Do you have a difficult history with your mom? That's kind of personal. Oh, he totally does. Hey. Trevor, just back off. I ask because a lot of times when a younger man has gone through some trauma at the hands of a woman. Okay, I don't want to talk about my mom. <laughs> well, that may be why you should. I sense you may have had a bad experience in your youth that you were not at fault for, and you're still carrying it around. So what? Everybody's fucked up, lady. If you were hurt, you need to get it out. Otherwise, it's like a tumor. It grows. Look, I'm just depressed because, you know, with this virus and all. Do you have the virus? No. Well, there's something to feel good about. I guess. It's just, look, I'm stuck at home all day and my place is like this big. I mean, you think I want to be doing this shit right now? I had a job. I'm not some low life. In this morning, some asshole showed up while I was sleeping and repoed my car. I'm sorry that happened to you. Thanks. You're not alone, you know. That's happened to a lot of people. But it gets worse, you know. My girlfriend left me after five years. No warning. Just took off with some jerk and a bimmer. <laughs> I hear you, Jake. Get on him. You mean women? I didn't say that. You did. You're not all bad, you know. Yeah, I'm not bad. Yeah. Maybe. But with all due respect, you guys treat each other pretty bad. What do you mean? Okay, the whole family? I heard your whole meeting from the beginning. Oh, and that shit at the carnival? Taking two kids up on a great ride and leaving the third one to sit there and watch? Mm -mm. Charlie, that wasn't cool. <laughs> and Anya, you're cold. I mean, you better get on that teddy bear and hug it till the stuffing comes out. And Cassie, don't play with guns. Just, just don't. You even had me scared. <laughs> And I've been to prison a lot. Wow. Charles, we're not judging here. Whoops. Jake, I'm thinking that maybe you need to tell your story. Everything that you've been through, get it off your chest because you're not some guy who really wants to bomb people's family meetings and say mean things. I think you're better than that. Actually, I've been uh, thinking of going to therapy. Why not? Yeah, and I've done it. Well, that's a shocker. I mean, you talk to socks. Jake. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was judging, huh? Yeah. Yes. My bad. New box opens up. Sam and Miri, Cassie's kids, are sitting somewhere behind them. A typical suburban living room. Miri has a cell phone in her hands, which she stares out without raising her head. <laughs> She's totally focused on her phone. Hi, Grandma. Oh, hello, sweetie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Who are you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Bill. You mean Jake. Right, right, Jake. He's, uh, he's a friend of ours. Guys, guys, say thanks for the stuff. Oh, right. Thanks for the presents, Grandma and Granddad. Glad you liked them. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Sammy, Mary, did you guys watch the show last night? What show? Mine? On national television? Nah. Pass. I thought you were going to tell them. I don't know. I, I told them, I, I think. Um, they're 11 and 14, okay? I tell them to shower and they didn't do that, so what do you want? Okay. Uh, well, guys, last night on the show... Oh. My show? 
Is it on TikTok? Uh, no, but it's watched by like millions of people. <laughs> oh, forget it. Okay, listen, I said your name's on TV and wished you a happy holidays. We like presents. Yeah. Right, I'll send money. Good, that works. Hey, where are you guys? In the living room? Cassie gets up, she's looking around the corner in her house. Hi. Psych, it's a virtual background. Whoa, that's, that's clever. But you mean you're not actually in the living room? It's a picture of the living room and we're using it as our background. That, they totally had me fooled. That's my boy, he's got talent. You know, Sammy, that could be a career someday, like uh, like graphic design or video editing or... You did I did it. Yeah, she did it. Oh, well, then it could totally be a great career for a girl, too. Shit, did it again. Why don't you stop me, Eleonora? Because we're not married anymore. Annoyed at Charles everybody else, Mary puts in earbuds. So where are you guys? Uh, who knows? But look what I have. Sam holds up some graham crackers and some chocolate. We're gonna make s'mores. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I've seen a fire. He holds up a BBQ lighter. Sammy, where are you? Sam flicks the lighter on. Mary doesn't notice because her head's down and the music's on loud. She turns her back to the camera lost in the song. Oh my God. Sam, Samuel? Holy shit. Cassie <laughs> jumps up and leaves the camera. She's running around her house. Sam, Mary, where are you? Sam, is your father nearby? No, he's always in his room. M Mary, Mary, can you hear me? Sam, you stop that right now! Not a problem, Grandma. I'm just gonna start the fire. Little boy, that is not safe. <laughs> Sam, where are you? That's you, Craig. Oh, sorry. God damn it, Sammy. Oh, wait, uh, Sam, Mary. Sam plays with the lighter. He's holding a handful of notebook no. paper close to it. Mary, tell your brother to stop that. He can't hear you. She's listening to Khaled. Please, Sammy, don't do something stupid. That's what my dad always says, right before mom starts yelling at him and throwing stuff, and he ends up sleeping in the basement. I have That's no idea room. where they are. I, I have no idea. God I damn it, Sammy. House. Where are uh, you? Wouldn't you like to know? He's got the flame closer to the paper. Oh. Wait, wait. You, sh you should call the girl. She's listening to music through her phone. Oh, Jesus. Of course, of course. Charles is dialing his cell phone. Well, come on, Mary. Come on. Hi, Amanda. How are you doing? Sam, no! Hey! She wrestles the lighter away from him. Wh hey, where are you two? Yeah, where are you? We're in Dad's car, in the driveway. See? She touches her laptop, she kills the fake background that she put in there, and now we see they're in the back seat of like a parked car outside. I can't believe you. Cassie runs off. Sam and Mary's Zoom box turns off. Christ, that was scary. Thank you, Jake. You had the answer. Ah, way to go, Jake. No problem. You're very resourceful. Well, you know, I try. Oh, David's with them. You better figure out why Sam was acting out, Cass. Yeah, well, maybe after I punish the living shit out of him. Don't be too tough on them, Cass. I mean, I, I, I say that as someone who's acted out a lot when I was a kid. I mean, I just wish my mom had done more than spank my ass. Well, that's certainly good advice. Damn good advice. Mom, I really have to get some rest. I'm on the air tonight. Yeah, I need to go soon, too. But we didn't finish discussing my estate. Can't we all be your executor? Yeah, can you just, like, set it up so that, like, we all have to agree on, like, the arrangements? Oh, you three couldn't get along for the duration of this meeting. How are you going to agree on issues like who gets the house? Or the silverware, for that matter? Kidding? The last thing I want is those horrendous dishes you got from Aunt Sylvia. I'll take it. I just need more plates to eat off of. Sammy's broken most of ours. I'll make a note of that. But who's my executor? Anya is the oldest. I don't want that power. Trevor and Cass would never trust me to make those decisions. 
true and their sibling rivalry might create more problems. If uh, nobody wants a job, I, I, I could do it. Well, there's an idea. Come on, Lenora. No, you know what? He's shown resourcefulness. Always a good trait in someone holding a trusted position. All right, well, let's not get crazy. I mean, no offense, Jade, but we don't know you. I understand. We don't even know your full name. It's uh, Gerson, Tyler Gerson. <laughs> Oh, I see. Yeah. So Jake was. It, it, yeah, it, it was a lie. Sorry. I... Okay, we'll put my idea aside for now. Yeah, mom, don't worry. We're going to figure out who's your executor and we're going to do all the necessary paperwork. Cassie and Trevor and I will have a separate meeting to discuss all that and get back to you. But the important thing is you're going to deal with this cancer thing and we're all behind you. Yeah, I want to know when your appointments are so I can fly home and help out. Me too. Ditto. I don't want you all to risk Corona for me. It would be nice to see you in the flesh. And thank you, Tyler, if that's your real name, for volunteering. No problem. Actually, it's uh, Scott. Scott Little. It doesn't matter. Um, Lenora? Yes. I'd really love to talk with you later after that. Can we do that? Can we talk yeah. later? Yeah, could you? What out, Cass? Lenora? Okay, we can talk. But Charles, I'm not about to jump back into a relationship with you all of a sudden on Christmas. No, I, no, I totally understand. Just please know that despite my embarrassing miscues, the sentiment that I wrote you is it's real. And I'd like to hear your poem. Really? Yes, I might as well. Apparently everybody else has. Then, then we'll set up a time. Agree. Phew. <laughs> Wait, Mom, what about the song? Oh, yeah. Um, I have my little candle right here. <sighs> Forgot hey, all about that. <laughs> you said we should all have a candle ready so we can sing on Christmas morning <laughs> like the old days. I got mine. We're all full of candles. Well, folks, uh, I just want to say thank you for being so kind to me, but I should go. What? And not sing with us? I, I, I don't even have a candle. I, the only thing I have here in my place that can be lit is, uh, well, <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> uh, who, who the hell cares? Shit, bro, just like, like whatever you want. All right, then. Kids, get your candle and get back on Zoom. Okay, on it. Uh, wait, are you sure you want Sammy lighting anything? Oh, don't worry, Mary will watch him. Did everybody get the lyrics I sent? They all pull out like a pretty uh, big lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 right. Mom, we usually uh, sing a Christmas song. I know, but this is close to a Christmas song. It's what I think we need to hear now in this time of disease and all the other stuff that's going on. Amazing Grace? Yes, except this is the Unitar Unitarian version. It's more inclusive. So where we used to sing was blind, but now I see. We now sing I was visually challenged, but now I'm sighted. Uh, Sam and Mary pop back in. They're in another room. Mary has a candle and a light. <clears throat> Sam puts his hand too close. Oh. She slaps it away. Good. Let's all light our candles and... Wait, 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 wait. One more thing. We're all meeting here again next year, right? God, I hope not. That would mean there's still COVID and we can't get together. Yeah, if there's still a pandemic going on next Christmas, then... It'll suck. Yeah. So how about we just all agree to get together for Christmas next year, so no matter what, wherever we are, Definitely. Yeah. Sound like a plan. Yes. There. Yes. I'm there. We'll be there. Well, what about you, Scott? It, it, it's Steve, actually. But yeah, yeah, I'll be there, Lenore. I, I wouldn't miss it. Good. Okay, everybody. Light them if you got them. They all light candles except for Steve. He lights a joint. Sam, Mary, try to ignore Steve, okay? <sighs> all right. Thank you, everyone. And hold on now for let's sing. 
holding. Let's see, we'll go with this. We'll go. Amazing. could pop back in and turn their cameras on, it'd be great. <laughs> I'm gonna run to the bathroom. One, to take great, you guys. Jeez. Somebody get a beer, or anybody wants to chit chat, please, I'll be right back. <laughs> Greg, I gotta, take, I gotta take my dog out for a walk. <laughs> He's been waiting. <laughs> that was great, you guys. You were all fantastic. Yeah, that was work. terrific. <laughs> What did he say? <laughs> God, I was uh, too close to home, damn it. I swear to God, my life is so much like that play, it's horrible. <laughs> wow. Well, well Jeff, God. we look like we could be related, actually. So <laughs> I, think, I think I was just playing you in a few years. So how got, how were you guys reading the scripts? Where, what were your scripts like? I couldn't see them, I obviously. Movies. There's Jasper. Oh, we just put them up on the screen. You know, yeah, I just put just mine up there. Side. And I kept moving it around to try to get something better. And it kind of worked out if I made the Zoom box really small and put it on top of the, the script and then just read the, the, the you know, kept the, just kept my eye just under the Zoom box. But. Well, you guys were in character the whole time and, and your expressions, you couldn't see you, that you were reading scripts. You were totally in character the whole time. It was wonderful right. to watch. Yeah, really, really good. Yes. Fun. Yeah, you all did a terrific job. Super fun. Fantastic. Cheers. I agreed about all my castmates. Fantastic. <laughs> um, we love a Greg DePaul original. Yes, Don't we? Of it's been a long time. We all, uh, Allison knows this. We all used to be in, um, in uh, I know Greg from an improv class like 25 ish years ago. And then uh, he and his old writing partner, Hank, had this um, group, yeah. writer's group. Hi, Hank. And oh, there he is. Hey, buddy. I didn't even see you there. And we get together at Hank's house on Clark Street in, uh, in Beverly Hills, and we would read all these uh, great writers. Writers and actors get together put on scenes. We do them. We even made a, a, a fantastic little movie, which I watched recently. And, um, and we called it the Clark Street Players. And it was, uh, it was kind of an institution there for 10 or 15 years. There's a lot, of, a lot of great writers, and even Greg was included. Greg was definitely the weakest of the writers, I think we all. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was the actors that held you all up. <laughs> That's generally the case. It's generally true. How are you, Half Price, Hank? Where did Greg go? Why did he run away? Can't take the criticism? I think he can't take it. He's crying right now <laughs> in the bathroom with the door closed. That's As traditionally, usual. That's traditionally what <laughs> happens with Greg the Zoom readings. The <laughs> the <laughs> the oh, there he's he is. He's prepping oh, Greg, Greg popped up on the, uh, on the other computer. Oh. There he is. Oh, boy. Tricky Great job, out. guys. Great job, Greg. Great job, all the actors. Hey. Oh, hey, Hank, sir. Hey. Thank you all. That was wonderful. It was just really wonderful. And you can see why I love all these actors. Really <laughs> terrific. They did Especially fantastic. Sophie and Max. <laughs> yeah, 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 nailed yeah. it. Yeah. Good job, guys. You were great. Good job. Yeah, the best people from New York and the best people from L.A. No, no, go. no, no. You got that all wrong. <laughs> Jeff, the other guy with the crazy beard that was talking before, and I are glad you reached all the way to the High Sierra in Mammoth Lakes for Allison McDonald Page. Yes. Sounds and like a McDonald hey. Page fan. We've been doing Zooms once a week together, reading plays, just like you guys did, but we don't have the luxury of a fantastic writer like you do at least not every time. 
Sometimes we do a couple of our own. But um, what you guys did tonight gives us so much information to go forward with our own at Sierra Classic Theater. And we're really, really happy to have been allowed to come and do this with you. Oh, you're so nice. Thank you, Charles. Fantastic. No troubles. It was really a pleasure. So much. Very, very much so. Very much so. Really terrific. Yeah. And done so well. Thanks. Good to see you. I see Hank and Sean. Let's see anybody else. And Delani came in. It's all, it's all good. And good to see you, Sharon, of course. That's all cool. Just glad you all came. Really appreciate it. And I'm yeah. going to send everybody here an email. So somebody, any thoughts and stuff, people could just write me something. It'd be nice. Any thoughts you have? Okay. I was just cool. thinking, I think, I think it's really the Christmas idea is so perfect, you know, because everybody's little box could have some little personal Christmassy thing in the background, you know, <laughs> um, you know, you could just see, you know, and that would be a, you know, their character and also the, t the time, you know, the day. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be a way to kind of have a set that is in many boxes, even if it's different, it really defines the t day. Oh, that's fine. Okay. That's a good idea. And maybe like, you know, just whatever, hats or, uh, you know, little, mm -hmm. it would be a great way to have it all be red, white, like red, red and green in the background, you know? Right, right. Cool. And it's a smart time to write a piece like this because you could you could get it all up with production and just roll it out at Christmas, you know. And hopefully we're just exiting COVID. Well, have yeah. you guys or guys, we're still in it? Yeah, yeah. Don't go there. Have okay, you guys seen just the play? Exiting. Have you seen the play The Humans by any chance? Yeah, you guys know that yeah. part. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. It. Good play. Well, so it's an award-winning Broadway production, but your play about Christmas echoes how they did theirs. It's a family drama just like this. And um, I think yours has got um, a chance of being every bit as good. And we actually went to a place where we could see it in person um, right before everything went to hell. And, um, you know, this brings me right back to how good we felt about these family kinds of things to watch. And, you know, I think I might have teared up. I might, I'm not gonna say I did. <laughs> I might have teared up once. It's really good. Thank you. And really Merry good. Christmas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Happy holidays for everyone that eventually will happen. I mean, the thing that I like. I'm going to go walk my dog, okay? I, yeah. I, I just better run, Greg. Great work, you guys. <laughs> Terrific. This was so much fun. Thanks. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Is walk my dog a euphemism? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's something that David would say. <laughs> I'm not saying anything there are children. Okay. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> He's heard it all, unfortunately. Yeah, their dad is great, so. They've heard <laughs> I was gonna say that I, I, I love it overall, but I mean, I think we're all thinking about what is the holidays gonna look like? And so this was a good, a good peep into what one family's holiday is going to look like. Because I've been wondering, what are we going to do for Thanksgiving? What are we going to do for Christmas? Is this going to be on Zoom? How awkward is it going to be? And it's good to know that somebody's is going to be a lot more awkward than mine. <laughs> 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 a lot. OK, well, thank you. Exa thank you, Pavar. And welcome back to New Jersey. Thank you. <clears throat> back on the East Coast. Yep. Greg, while you have everybody here, do you have any questions? Um, no, I'm, but I'm going to send everybody an email and, and just like write any thought, anything you want is totally cool. If you have any, you know, whatever, I'll do that. And I'll do that like the next hour, you know, and um, Will it be as difficult as opening up the Zoom? It'll be harder. <laughs> be harder. Fuck, I missed like the first 15 minutes. Oh, it was all a monologue. It was, uh, I'll, I'll explain. I know, I know. <laughs> well, anyways, the actors are awesome. Everybody... Uh, being here and being help and, and being an audience is awesome. And I just uh, thank good you. job. You're great. Thank you. Oh, it was a great job. Thank you. Yeah, very much. Good job, everybody. Thanks, guys. Hey, yeah, thanks unbelievable you. casting. The casting was brilliant, except thanks for that for 72 year old lady. She wasn't quite <laughs> <laughs> looking, looking good, kid. Looking really good. Other than that, done. you guys were brilliant. <laughs> you were brilliant too, my dear. Thank you and good night. Good to meet you all. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Greg. Thanks, Greg. See you later. Bye. Bye. All right.
Good to see all you guys I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. Great work. Good to see you. Love you Great to see you, Troy. Yeah, Great to see you. love you guys back. Bye, everyone. Good job. Bye. Bye. It was nice see to meet you. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey guys, thank you again. Chris. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, thank you. And uh, John, you're very funny. Yeah, John, Thanks. you're hilarious. But I got to tell you, John, when I saw you when I saw you come in and I knew that you were playing that role, I was like, this <laughs> is going to be incredible. <laughs> I'm glad it can't, worked. Can't wait to see that. Can you take that Zoom bomber acting class just for Zoom bombing auditions? You know it, bro. <laughs> you know. That rule had me all over it. <laughs> yeah, it, it did. It did. The name thing was very funny, Greg. It played <laughs> out very well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. Craig jumped in at the last minute. And, I did. Uh, John, you're a funny, a funny and talented guy. I love the piece, man. Uh, I think you should really pursue this some way, somehow. I am going to do it. I'm going to uh, uh, lie, cheat, steal, or kill. <laughs> or so. maybe all three. I mean, really, yeah. why? Why should you limit yourself? You are a writer. Yep. If I can't talk to power, I sleep with it. That's my mind. <laughs> oh, truth, that's what it is. I sleep truth. I don't know. I'm anyway. changing my name back to my name. Yeah, just sorry. so I don't I don't oh, come yeah, into the next. Feel free. You can keep it as Beal if you want, Johnny. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I better rename to um Greg. Right. So the next time you go into a meeting, John, they're gonna be like, uh, <laughs> Who the hell is so, this guy? Yeah, exactly. Feel. Hey, Craig, we'll talk. We'll set up a, we'll do, I think uh, my friend Elizabeth couldn't be here tonight because she's teaching a class. She teaches okay. at Boise State in Idaho. Oh, uh, that's awesome. She has a script that she wanted to ask us to read and I'll figure it out and see if other people have some work and we'll do something about some. Yeah, I, I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in some stuff. I've been writing on a bunch of different scripts. So I'm just going to polish up like, you know, a good 30 pages, send it in. So. Okay. That would be awesome, dude. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll kill Awesome, man. You guys, you, awesome. you got to do something with this though before the virus is cured, dude. Otherwise, it'll lose yeah, its no, impact. It's going to be cured. That's my honest opinion. But okay, yeah, I agree. probably you know, won't be. Honestly, yeah. Greg, this wouldn't be hard to produce and put up. Uh, you should speak to Dorello. Dorello did a piece where they did um, sort of a whole mini production uh, using Zoom. Is that the mm. one that I watched? Probably. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, I don't think it would be that hard to produce and put together. So. No, I just think as someone who's a little bit more adept with Zoom and, and, and you, you, if you really want to make it something that's recorded entertainment and not live, yeah. then, it's, then it's, you know, shooting things at different times. Yeah, 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 totally, right. totally. You just, have, you just have to map it out in detail and just be very clear about all the technology and the sequence right, in which right. you're going to implement it and nail down those performances. But yeah, I could totally see it. Uh, I, I'll be honest though, just for something that was kind of, you know, the first run through, I thought technically it actually worked pretty well. I mean, really obviously, did. you know, yeah, you know, I, obviously there was some glitches, but I mean, for the first run through, that was, that was great. I mean, right. I was buying the fact that these people were, you know, communicating as a family on Zoom, you know? Yeah, I, I think the character relationships really, really came through. I mean, and wonderful actors. So obviously that is just sort of coming through the screen, but um, I think you got a lot in that draft as far as like all the uh, character relationships and the, and the family and stuff like, you know, I believed it. Um, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, good stuff. All right. No other questions, Greg? Here's your, here's your shot because we just went No, through. no. I'm going to send people an email. I'm going to try because I think okay. it's like, interesting when people just on their own say, you know what I mean? Keep that, copy that chat thread just so you have it. Oh, okay. I haven't looked at it yet. I'm going to look at it now. I saw yeah. those things pop up. Just copy it over to a Word document so you don't lose it. Okay. Okay, cool, man. Yep. Okay. Good stuff. John? All right. Man. Craig is good as always, you know. Happy and uh, it's your Craig. birthday tomorrow, so happy birthday, man. Oh, cool. thank you, you know? very much. Happy yeah. birthday, Craig. All right. Thank you, Greg. All right. You guys have a good night. All right. Copying this Bye. thing. Okay. Bye-bye, guys. All right, Craig. I'll see you, man. Yep. Take it easy, buddy. Okay. Copying this document.